Hi, my name is Georgia Youngs. I'm a professional artist and local art instructor. During this COVID-19 pandemic, I found I was doing something that I thought I'd never do. I ended up copying 20 paintings of a very famous group. Now, you're looking behind me and I'm sure the paintings behind me is, are giving you a little bit of a clue as to who they were. It was the group of seven and Tom Thompson and it's their 100th anniversary this year. So to celebrate this event, I decided I was going to create a tribute project to them. And fortunately, I did have this in mind because what was I going to do now that I was isolated during this pandemic? And at the same time, as I was painting more and more of them, I thought, what am I going to do with all these paintings? And someone said to me, maybe you should have other people see them more than just us, which was my students, family and friends. And I thought they're right. So I created this video for you so you can see exactly what I have done. I'm going to take you on a tour in a few minutes uh, so you can see each one of these paintings and I'll give you a little chat about them. So in the meantime, if you want to contact me, you can through my email address or through my website. So the very first painting that I copied was this one. It's called The Tangled Garden by MacDonald. I had two paintings that I really love and wanted to paint in this tribute project and this was one of them. I love how he creates out of this very chaotic garden order and so he through his brush stro strokes rather and his design he leads us through into the sunflowers and into the flower bed. All of this and against the backdrop of this back of this house. I really love this painting. So the second painting I did of McDonald's is this is called Falls Montreal River. Now we've gone from the very first image of his which is very intimate and really up close and inside someone's backyard to this one now that gives us a full wide vista of like it could be like a mile or two miles um, ahead and into the perspective of it all. It starts in the foreground with this wild and crazy water roaring around. You can almost hear the sound of the water as it's boiling and rolling around and through those rocks. We don't see the waterfalls at all because it just drops straight down. And then in the center of the canvas, we start to see that lovely meandering blue river as it goes through the valley of, uh, I'm not sure where this is, but we see all this beautiful autumn colors. Again, this is a piece where you can almost feel the mist in your, in your face as you're looking at it. You can hear the roar of the water and at the same time that serenity as it moves um, through the center of this valley. Again, it was a really fun painting to copy. So remember I said when I started this tour through this tribute project that I had two images that I really wanted to copy. This is the second one. This is called Woodland Waterfalls and it's by Tom Thompson. I love this piece, again, because we get that sense we're in this really dark, dewy kind of um, forest and off to the side we have this lovely little waterfalls coming down into the stream. Again, it's an autumn picture as we can see, but again, we can almost feel the wet moss under our feet as we're sort of looking at this waterfalls, just hearing it sort of, unlike McDonald's, which is really noisy, this is a very quiet little waterfalls. I love this painting. So this is the second one I did of Tom Thompson. It's called Northern River. Now, where the first one of his was sort of a very intimate and in close again, you're actually walking through this really dense forest. Now we're coming out of the forest and into the clearing as it were in this one. So we can see sort of that the beginning of it in the foreground, that sort of darkness, but now we can see the vista as it, that little stream is expanding, it's getting larger. We can see now the, the wooded, nice little wooded area at the back. Again, a fall picture, which is always lovely to see those warm colors. He also created this, what we call picket fence, which means we are trying to look between the trees to see what's behind, which is a really neat trick that I think that these men developed and it's um, sort of a, a fun way to paint. So the next painter that we're going to talk about is Arthur Lismer. The first painting that we're going to look at that I painted of his or copied of his is called The Sheep's Nose Bon Echo. Very strange name, 
for a painting, but obviously that's the name of this location. I love the colors again that he's using. He was using all these lovely um, turquoises and rich browns and greens and purples, much like Tom Thompson. And yes, I did count all those clouds in the sky so I could get them in the right spot. Anyway, again, it was a, 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 an interesting and lovely painting to copy. Here's the second one by Arthur Lismer that I did. This one's called Isles of Spruce. Now, again, you're going to find that some of these fellows started to outline their work. And this is the influence, strangely enough, by Asian art that, be, um, that was sort of become known um, over here in North America. And so that influence of outlining sort of is accredited to Asian art, which in some cases I really do like. And in this, in this one in particular, Arthur Lismer, to bring that uh, little island of rocks and all those pine trees, um, he has outlined them a little bit just to, you know, to emphasize them. Again, he's used that beautiful rich turquoise in the sky, which he then brings down into the water as well. Again, um, what can I say? All of these are sort of fun to paint. <laughs> so here we have Frederick Horseman Farley. This painting is titled Vera, and the reason I chose, I chose it for a number of reasons. One, the, the title Vera is actually the name of my grandmother, so I sort of uh, appealed to me that way. Two, I like the idea of this portrait, sort of, it's in the shadows a bit, so we have all these cool colors. Um, this woman is very sort of thoughtful, but at the same time you look at her and think, I wouldn't mind having a conversation with this lady. So again, being a portrait artist, I again, I had, uh, I enjoyed painting this one. So here's the second painting that I did of Frederick Horseman Varley, by Frederick Horseman Varley. Varley. Um, this one's titled Portrait of Alice Massey. Again, uh, I love this painting. It shows a really strong woman, but a woman who I think probably would have also a very kind heart. Um, the Massey family was a very famous, wealthy family in uh, around Toronto, and they were actually financially very supportive of the group and helped them um, through their trials and tribulations as they were um, painting. So we're moving on in our tour, and the next artist is Lauren Harris. The first image I'm going to show you that I copied, this one's called Return from Church. The original size actually is 40 by 48, so it's a really large painting. But I decided to do it on a very small canvas just to sort of create that sort of coziness that I felt in looking at this and all these people on their way, the men wearing their top hats, the women in all their fur muffs and stuff coming back from church. Um, again, we have the, the trees that are sort of breaking things up, again forcing us to sort of look beyond to see sort of what's, what's behind them. Um, you can feel that sort of little chilliness in the air. Nice snowy day, but a nice sunny day as we used to have them back in um, Montreal and Ontario. Something we don't get here. <laughs> so this is the second one that I copied by Lauren Harris. Now this probably will look somewhat familiar, but slightly different. And the reason being is you're probably used to seeing the original product that he did in his studio. And it's, it's, the title for both of them are, is the same, it's called Above Lake Superior. But this is the sketch that he did for the original large piece that he, um, that he created in the studio. The one in his studio is, uh, that he created in his studio is actually quite large. This piece, the sketch, is uh, 10 and a half by 13 and a half, which is very similar to the size of the canvas that I chose to do it on, which was very um, happenstance, which was actually, I was very lucky to have a canvas about the same size. Personally, I love this one even better than the very iconic image that we're used to seeing. I love the sky a little bit better. I love the coolness of the foreground a little bit better. Um, and it's just, I don't know, I just think the spontaneity of it is just um, a little bit more endearing. So the next painter that we're going to look at is Franklin Carmichael. The first one that we're looking at, this first painting that I copied is called Autumn Hillside. Again, this is one of uh, a very familiar, sort of one of the more iconic images that we know of or see of the Group of Seven. And again, this piece is all these gorgeous, um, really vibrant autumn colors 
in the middle of the canvas and then in the foreground again these really cool but rich deep colors that he they put into their greens and their reds and the rocks and so on um, and that little break in the cloud that's in behind in the, in the background composition wise I mean you can't beat this one this is a, a really a lovely little piece but again um, the original size isn't that big but it's bigger than my canvas obviously this is a 30 done on a 30 by 36 so the second one by Carmichael is this one called October Gold it's the canvas that I chose to do it on is, is slightly larger than the one that he originally did his painting on but it's relatively close. I'll have to admit this one and there's one other that I'll point out when we get to it were two of actually out of everything that I did were some of the more difficult ones to do. You wouldn't think so but it really did um, caused me a lot of problems in trying to find the tonal values and the colors that he was actually using. Um, but other than that, again, uh, the, I did count all those little dots from that tree that you see there. So I tried, and all the ones that I was doing, I was really trying to do brush stroke to brush stroke, color to color, tonal value to tonal value, as close to what I was looking at. So we're moving on in our tour, and we've come now to A.Y. Jackson. The first image that I copied of his is called Lake Cognachine. Now again, very, very subtle, warm colors. And sometimes it's harder to copy an artist's work when they're using such subtle shades and, and, and colors than it is if an artist is using big, bold brush strokes and colors. So I found out as I was copying them. Um, this was painted in 1920. Um, and you're going to find if I were to give you the dates of most of these paintings that I'm going to be showing you, most of them were, and I wanted them to be, around the time of their first art show, 1920. So some of them were painted a little bit before, some a little bit after. But I wanted that thread of continuity of them painting around the time of their first art show, which is what we're celebrating, right? So here's the second one by Jackson, and this is called Algoma Rocks Autumn. Now. This, remember I said there were two that sort of gave me pause <laughs> as I was trying to copy them. They were sort of challenging me more than others. This is the second one that sort of I was surprised at how much it challenged me to get the subtleness of all those ready browns that he was using and to create the perspective of this piece. So um, I learned a lot from doing this piece, I must admit, but again, it was a, a, quite a bit of a challenge. So here we come to Frank Hans Johnston. Now I paint, I chose this one to copy because I couldn't get over the fact that he created those really dark clouds across the top and had that beautiful yellow cloud up in the sky and then right over down over here on the right hand corner we have all the, the sun beaming down on those green trees creating that very limey green kind of color. The piece, the title of this piece is called Serenity Lake of the Woods. And again, it's a large piece that he painted. It's a 40 by 50, so it's a fairly large canvas. Obviously, I didn't paint it on such a large canvas. But um, I love doing clouds, and so I was really happy to do a cloud sort of similar to how I do them. So it was sort of fun to do this. And, I'd, and it did. It really, um, I felt very peaceful in doing this. It's sort of well titled. Serenity Lake of the Woods. And here's the second one I did of his. This is called Blue and Gold Algoma. Um, you're going to find probably or you are finding that I, I did a lot of autumn scenes, scenes rather, because, well, they're sort of fun. They're a lot more fun to paint. You have a lot more color to choose from. And I think these fellows too probably felt the same way because they were out in autumn time doing a lot of autumn scenes. Um, again, this piece very again very it looks very simplistic I I found it much more challenging I was actually surprised at how challenging it actually was to do but um, you know what can I say I chose it and I was going to paint it all right so I've taken you through all the original artists of the group of seven and Tom Thompson and then after their initial show in 1920 um, over the next um, three, four, five years, three other artists joined them. One um, jo that joined in 1926 was this fellow, 
AJ Casson. Now, he's a very prolific artist and he's got so many images out there that I'm sure that everyone is so familiar with. He does a lot of um, city, small towns, as well as landscape paintings. A lot of beautiful watercolors at the same time. I chose this one though, and this is called House Tops in the Ward. It was, he painted this in 1924. And I thought it sort of reflected a little bit of what we're going through in our pandemic, our COVID pandemic, in that sense we're all inside, we're all in our homes sort of hunkered down, and yet we're all still connected as these homes are all connected. I, I, I hadn't really thought about it until after I'd finished painting it. And I guess um, in my mind, without really realizing, that's sort of how I was feeling about this piece. And when I sort of started to analyze it, I realized exactly that's what I was feeling about this piece. Um, it was a difficult one to do in a sense that you have all these incredible wacky angles and stuff of rooftops. But I thought if um, Mr. Casson can do it, I can do it. Okay, so this is the second artist who joined the group after they had their first show. He joined in 1930 and he was invited to join because the group felt they needed more artists from other provinces and more, you know, sort of a broader range of representation of, of across Canada. I chose this painting that he did called Lumberjack, which he painted 1916 or so around that time because I felt it really represented um, very very Canadian, I thought, you know, how, how much more Canadian can we get than a lumberjack? But here we have a really hard-working guy who seems to be very proud of himself and what he has achieved. So the very last artist to join as when they were the group of seven is this fellow, and this is Lemoyne Fitzgerald. He joined in 1932. The next year following, in 1933, the group of seven changed their name to the Canadian Group of Painters. So it was only from 1920 to 1933 that the Group of Seven was known as the Group of Seven and Tom Thompson. And as I said, then in 1933 they changed it to the Canadian Group of Painters. This painting is um, by Fitzgerald. It's called Dr. Snyder's House and he painted it while he was living in Winnipeg. Um, to be truthful, I mean, I love this. It's sort of the backyard and I realized, I don't know why, I was always thinking that brown house in the background there, that yellowy brown house, was Dr. Snyder's house. And then I realized it wasn't, of course. It's just, just this one that's off to the right where we can see just the steps going up to the back porch is actually Dr. Snyder's house. So all we have is the path leading, the snowy path leading up to the stairs and the other path sort of going, I guess, around to the side of the house doing, going who knows where. Um, but again, we have all these lovely trees um, sprouting up all over the place, again, forcing us to sort of look in between to see sort of what's behind them. Um, again, it's sort of a, a, a nice technique that these fellows have in doing that. Again, a nice bright sunny uh, winter day. Okay, so we've come to the end of our tour and I, had to decide when I was on my 19th painting what one I was going to make number 20. Which of all the iconic images that these men painted that were, are so well known was I going to do that would sort of wrap up my whole tribute project and at the same time um, people would relate to and the sort of the situation that we find ourselves in in our um, COVID-19 um, lockdown. And I thought this one sort of covered all bases. This is as this is called Stormy Weather, Georgian Bay, painted by Frederick Horseman Varley in 1920, right on in the year that these men had their first art show, which is sort of what my whole tribute project was celebrating their hundredth anniversary. The painting that I found a copy in one of my reference books. I think is truer to the colors than what we see normally in calendars that we normally pick up. This painting or the, the one that I was copying picked up on the subtle blues and greens of the water and end of the sky and that magnificent tree even though it was bending to all the weather it was standing true and strong just sort of like what we're doing as we're going through this pandemic. So after two and a half months, eight paintings, I found I was exhausted. I needed something to do just for myself. 
And so I had this um, photograph of some daffodils that I had taken. That they were given to me and I had put them in a blue vase, put them in a nice sunny window in my kitchen. And I thought this would be perfect. This is exactly what I needed. Something that I can just sort of paint on a large canvas and just be free. And then I found out that daffodils were the flower of hope. And I thought, how perfect is that? This is the title of this canvas. It's called Hope. Something I think I know I needed, and I think it's something we all need, especially now as we're going through this pandemic. The tribute project that I completed, and you saw all the images that I copied, is something very special. It's very special to me, but I think it would be very special to other people. I would love the fact that it would leave my studio and go out into the world who knows where so more people could see it and get the feeling that I felt of hope and strength that we all need as we're going through this pandemic. Thank you.